Welcome again to our uh, Lexio on the Gospel of the Sundays and today we're going to reflect on the Gospel of the Pentecost, uh, the daily Mass, the Mass during the day. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The thing to remember about John is that uh, for John, the resurrection, the ascension, and the sending of the Spirit all happen on the one day. Luke has a, a more extended appreciation of those three events and that they're the ones that we follow in our liturgy. But for John, it all happens on the first day. What we have here is a miracle, uh, a resurrection story where Jesus comes, the, the disciples are there in fear, but their fear is very quickly uh, turned to joy. And the peace that Jesus gives them is that peace that we've already seen in the Gospels over the last few weeks, uh, his peace, the peace that he gives, not just peace in general. But I wanted to focus uh, particularly uh, a couple of things there. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. I, I think it's true to say that the relationship between Jesus and the Father is the model of the relationship between Jesus and the disciple and his follower. Uh, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. As the Father sent me, I sent you. Remain in my love. Um, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, as I have kept the Father's commandments and remain in his love. So the whole understanding of the Christian life um, needs to be looked at in terms of the relationship between Jesus and the Father, and of course, ultimately, we are to be drawn in to share that. So after that, he goes on and, he, and it says, he breathed on them, um, receive the Holy Spirit. I suppose we, we perhaps could rush over that word breathed, but it's really a very interesting word that um, God breathed life into Adam, that the whole beginning of creation was coming through Jesus with God breathing into Adam. And there's that wonderful scene, Ezekiel, where the valley of the bones, mm -hmm. where all the bones are there and um, um, that... Um, the, 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 so the prophet is told to breathe on them and they begin to come to life and then the Lord says well this is Israel the new holy people it's a new stage in the step of salvation history and I think that's what's happening here that the breathing here is that there's a new stage about to happen and of course the new stage is is there in terms um, of the Holy Spirit we mentioned that at the very beginning um, Jesus was to baptise in the Spirit in contrast to John baptising um, with water. And the whole Gospel looks forward to this coming of the Spirit. The Spirit is linked to what follows. If you forgive the sins of people or any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And people often think of that as a sacrament of reconciliation, and it has an application there. But I think that the meaning there is the recognition that there is that contrast between the kingdom of sin and, and the kingdom of God. I think that the church teaches that our human nature was oriented with the default for God, but through sin, the default has become our inordinate um, selfishness. So what's by taking place there is that as it goes on, Jesus is giving the disciples the power over the kingdom of sin, mm -hmm. the power to be able to free people so that they are able now to be free of the, of the, the, um, the weight of sin and the influence of sin in order to enter more fully into the life of relationship with God. 
I always get carried away when David <laughs> starts because I think it's so complex. Um, what what struck me though was that sense of sin and the rephrasing of that one about my peace I give you. Yeah. And once again, for me, sin is something that inhibits people's growth, inhibits their ability to live and to expand. And I, and I wanted to link that into, to me, the power of love is a power that extends out. And this idea to, to send, I'm going to send you. I think people that um, real love encourages people to go out. To, to live, to, to breathe, to enjoy, to get out and mm. spread the good news. And, and I think that sense of sin, to me, is that sense that you, it, people's lives become stuck. Yeah. They, they become very confined. So mm. I, I'd like to say um, what struck me about this is to what degree am I willing to receive that power and go, go, move, mm. move, move the gospel. I think there are a number, number of interesting things in, in uh, the implications of that passage from John's Gospel. But let me just take a couple that um, challenge me. I think, yeah, they do challenge me. Um, there is something about a certain freedom that the gift of the Spirit that comes on Pentecost gives to us, a spirit uh, to be free. But it's, it doesn't mean we have freedom to do what we like. But it's a freedom that takes us back to be collaborators with, with, in the mission of Jesus. And so it's a freedom to be able to engage in that work and, and, and that mission. And that underpins what we've been saying over the past couple of Sundays, that, that um, dimension of love that's all caught up in that. And it's those three things of freedom, um, a collabor collaboration in the mission of Jesus and a, uh, a love that sits at the very heart of that. And to me that's pretty overwhelming mm -hmm. to think that that belongs to each of us. We invite you now to just look at the text and just to draw out what you feel the message is for you. Not just repeating what we have said, but what is God, what is Jesus? saying to you personally in this text. We invite you now to listen to the reading again. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I, I, I feel that the, um, the spiritual journey is within. Then in a sense it's, it's that wrestling between um, um, the fact that we were made for God and the fact that through sin we are... Um, oriented to our, our selfishness. And, and I feel that um, what I'd like to do in the light of that gospel is to um, just look into my own life and just see, um, you know, am, am I actually choosing God or choosing self in the things that I do? I suppose what struck me on the second reading was that sense they were locked in the room for fear and um, I wonder in my daily life what do I avoid or what do I not what what fears do I allow to um, dominate my actions rather than um, orientate towards the power of the spirit the message of Jesus to um, come to terms with those fears and not to let them dominate 
um, my actions. I, I, earlier I said about the, the freedom that the, the Spirit brings, to, a freedom to be free, and yet I, I take Virginia's point, it really sits within me about fear, and so often because of that I only put my toe into the water, I really don't move out into the deep. So this week, to try to, to have the courage and, 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 and the confidence and the faith that the Spirit really is in me and the Spirit is with me as I take those bigger steps into the, the work of Jesus. Thank you, John. We often say that the Lexio Divina process begins in the Scriptures and ends when it's in your life. So just spend a moment now thinking about what you can draw from this Gospel that you can apply to your life so that you might uh, finish the, the Lexio process in the way you live. We constantly remind you of the need for prayer, that um, the transformation of our sin-affected life requires the grace of God. So let us now just pause for a moment and ask the Lord um, for the strength, the grace, the courage that we need to have to implement what we have decided. Thank you for being with us again today. Just before I conclude, or we conclude, I'd just like to, to offer a bit of a summary that think that have come to me throughout the, our discussion. I think both John and um, Virginia raised the question of love. And I, I think the opposite to love is selfishness, that love enables us to have that freedom to reach out. And I think it is selfishness that, that binds us, that entraps us and imprisons us um, and doesn't enable us to reach out. And I, I think the message of Pentecost is the spirit gives us the grace that we need to overcome that selfishness and to reach out um, in love. That ability to be able to overcome sin. Uh, one of the important classical books in our history is the Theologica Germanica, and it says that self is sin. And I think that captures what it is, that that struggle that we have is something that dominates our life and therefore at Pentecost we let the Spirit come into our life uh, to help us with that struggle. So thank you for being with us. We're very glad that you give us uh, your time to, to um, share what we have to say and prompt you to look into your own life as well. So we now conclude in our usual way by reading the prayer from the Mass of the Pentecost Feast. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through Christ our Lord. <laughs>